All right, good morning artists, and welcome to Art Adventures Live. I am Mr. Andy, studio programs manager here at Jaws and Art Museum, which means I get to make art with people like you that come and visit the museum. Art Adventures is a drop-in art experience that happens free for members each week, every Friday morning at the museum throughout the year with our friend, Miss Therese, who's at home watching with us, watching along today, and we'll be answering your questions in the comments below. Hello, Miss Therese. In this time of COVID, we're all keeping each other safe by staying at home. So each week I will bring art adventures to you so you can make art the comfort of wherever you are. Each week we will be inspired by a different artist or artworks in the galleries and create a masterpiece while learning how these artworks were made and what makes, what makes them so special. For a full list of all the upcoming art adventures happening in May, and material lists for each weekly adventure, please visit jawson.org. If you don't have materials ready today, a recording of today's video will be posted along with a Pinterest board about today's artists so that you can make art and learn more about our, our artists today when you have time. Today's inspiration artist is Roger Shimamura. We will learn how to, <laughs> we're going to learn how he mashes together images to create paintings that tell stories about his life. And then we're going to mash up images of our own from comic books and magazines. So we'll need some comic books and magazines. We're going to take images that we find in those comic books and magazines. And we're going to learn a special transfer technique, an easy transfer technique, to take those images and mash them together uh, to create a, a drawing that tells a story about ourselves. Let's talk, let's get to know Roger Shimamura a little bit. Roger Shimamura is a Nebraska neighbor. He taught painting for 35 years at Kansas University and still lives not, not far south from Omaha in Lawrence, Kansas. He's a well-known artist with art in museums all over the world. Roger was born and raised in Seattle, Washington. This is Roger here. In Seattle, Washington, his parents were both born in America. Roger's grandmother was born in Japan and immigrated to the United States in the early 1900s. This means Roger is a third generation Japanese American. This means he's the third generation in his family to be an American citizen. Much of Roger Shimura's art presents ideas about his identity as an American citizen, using humor, cartoons, pop culture, to sneak facts about American history and stereotypes into his art. Kind of like when you put a pill into a piece of hamburger to give to your dog. Not long, before, not long after Roger was born in 1939, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, and America entered the world, world War II. And because of fear and racism, the U.S. government moved over 120,000, which was nearly all, all of the Japanese American citizens living in the United States, they moved all of these citizens to containment camps. In this time of COVID, we're all feeling a little bit contained, but we are still free to go to the grocery store, go on walks in our neighborhood, and visit friends from a safe distance. But while only a toddler, Roger and his family were forced to live in, a make, in makeshift buildings behind barbed wire. Roger was too young to remember much of this time, but his grandmother kept a diary, which inspired many of his early paintings. Although Roger had spent all of his life in America, both his parents had lived their whole lives in the U.S., people were often surprised that he was not more Japanese, and they were often even impressed that he spoke English so well. Roger's paintings often show the, pre the prejudices some people have about him because of the way he looks. His early paintings were, uh, were m many of his early paintings were inspired by his grandmother's journals and show us what life was like in the internment camp Minidoka, including some of his earliest memories, such as uh, celebrating his third birthday inside the camp. So here we can see this, a picture of a birthday cake with candles. One, two, three candles. And if we look closely through the window, there's, we can see barbed wire. This picture shows uh, his grandmother. Was, this picture was taken from a line in his grandmother's journals. And we see his grandmother doing laundry here. In the background, we can see barbed wire and a guard tower. And this was taken directly from a line in her, in her journal that says, Today I stayed in and did laundry. Our lives here are so dull. 
In this picture, Roger shows us the, the different buildings that all the families were forced to live in, in the camp. These, these, these uh, buildings only had one electrical outlet and no running water. They had to share a bathroom um, outside of a, a communal bathroom. So we can see all of these buildings, but if we look really closely, maybe you can see in the windows, we can see all the different people, these Japanese American citizens, trying to live their lives as normal. Here we can see a person playing a saxophone. There's, a, we look closely, there's a girl in a mortar board, like she's, graduate, uh, like she's graduating from high school. Uh, so they're, they're living their lives as normal. This picture show, uh, shows, this picture shows a scene within the Minidoka camp, and it's probably his grandmother here in the foreground, writing, uh, writing in her diary. We can see he has a brush and a scroll. In the background, back here, we can see another woman and a small child. That's probably Roger and his mother. And it's painted in a traditional Japanese style and dress. Most people in the camp, of course, did not dress like this. Most people had been living in America, like Roger's family, for generations, and wore American house dresses, blue jeans, and slacks. His grandmother did not write in a journal with brush calligraphy. Instead, she used an American-made pen. But he would often hide uh, guard towers. There's a guard tower and barbed wire through the doorway in the background so that people buying this pretty Japanese painting from the nice Japanese boy would eventually learn the truth about American history and experience with prejudice. Roger Shimomura is now 81 years old, and he's still making art. Like most artists with long careers, his style has evolved over the years and changes over time. Many, sometimes his paintings look like collections of images. Roger loves to collect. This is a collection of Roger Shimomura's salt and pepper shakers. Here's some pictures of his uh, collections of, toy, uh, of plastic shoes and ships and toys, Disney toys and Looney Tune toys. And many of his paintings also look like collections of images. Roger loves to collect, and his house is full of collections. And in these paintings, we can see that he matches up these collections of images of cartoons, hot dogs, Superman, samurais, to tell us stories. Sometimes that story is like a puzzle, and we have to look extra close to figure out. In Roger's painting from Jocelyn's galleries, when you're here next, you can look for the painting that looks like this, which is untitled. If we look closely, we can find characters, Disney characters like Snow White, Scrooge McDuck, Pinocchio in the arms of Geppetto. And then there's a samurai looking in from the right side across this blonde comic book lady. And if we look close, we can see that Superman is shooting X-ray vision into her blonde hair. And there's a, a, hand, a large hand painting the whole thing, which is probably good old Roger right there. So these paintings can trick a person to look and recognize the character, look for characters they recognize, but as we think harder about why Roger to chose to mash these images together, we start to unlock and learn more about Roger Shimomura's story. We're going to create a drawing that matches together images that we find from magazines or comic books or coloring books, and, uh, and we're going to learn, we're going to learn to take, we're going to learn a special tracing technique to take those images that we find and put them together in a, in a drawing that's all our own. And you can select images that tell a story about yourself. You can tell us what makes you special. What do you collect? Tell us about your family. Tell us about some of your family, favorite things. Uh, but uh, let's make some art. And before we make some art, let's talk, we first we need, to, we need to talk about our materials. So let's take a, a moment and figure out what we need today to create our mashed up image. Justin and Megan say hi from Kansas. Hello, Justin and Megan from Kansas. Make sure you, if you run into Roger, tell him hi from us. So we're going to take, uh, we're going to find images from magazines. And we're going to learn a special tracing technique so we can take our images and trace them onto a piece of paper to create uh, our our our. our pictorial narrative to tell our story. So you can see this is an image of a dog in a party hat. That's a party dog right there. 
and I've traced it on to the paper behind here to make to put the party dog in my picture. Here's Alfred E. Newman, parachuting out of a plane, and we've traced it into the middle of this picture. So I'm going to we're going to we're going to make some art together, and I'll show you how to take to take your images and mash them up. We, uh, we need let's talk let's talk about our supplies. Some of you may have a supply bag. Uh, Every Wednesday, beginning at nine. Every Wednesday. Thursday, beginning at nine a.m. Uh, for those that need them, can pick up a supply bag with all the materials you'll need for our art adventures in May. If you have a supply bag now, that this is what we'll need, we'll need for today. We'll need uh, one piece, just one piece of construction paper, maybe white paper, so we can so you can add color later. But if you have a lighter color, a light, if you have colored paper, that will work too. Can you spell the artist's name? Roger Shimamura. And this is, this is, Roger Shimamura's name is spelled, remember he likes to collect things? His name is spelled so, misspelled, people spell it wrong so often that he collects those misspellings. So when people send him mail and they spell his name incorrectly, he'll cut it out and put it in a scrapbook and people have misspelled his name over 200 times. Uh, but this is how it's actually spelled. S H I M O M U R A. Shimamora. Shimamora. All right, so today we'll need a, a one piece of construction paper, maybe a white piece, but colored paper will work as well. And then uh, hopefully you can, around your house or in your, uh, in your, from your sketchbook that was included in your supply bag, we'll need some sketch paper, maybe one or two sheets. We'll need some crayons. So grab your crayons, especially a dark color, and uh, we'll need a pencil. Those are the supplies that are in your bag. And hopefully, you've taken some time to find some magazines or comic books or coloring books or an old calendar, junk mail, anything that has uh, interesting images on it that we can use to, to incorporate into our drawing. So grab your materials, and let's move over here to my work table. And let's, and let's make some art. So come on over this way. Let me grab what we need. And we'll begin. All right, so. What do we need? We need this. All right, so come on over here. So just like Roger uh, Shimamura's um, picture from the galleries, we're going to look for images. And we're going to select images that maybe tell a story about yourself. So you can find images. Um, you can find images of some of your favorite things. You can find images that tell us what makes you special, and we're going to put them together to create a composition. So uh, that means uh, we're going to put our paper down, and I'm going to show you a transfer technique. We're going to take our crayon. And we're going to fill a piece of paper full of color, black, purple, whatever color you choose. So that we can then we can take that piece of paper full of crayon color, put it on top of our drawing paper, put our picture on top of that like a sandwich, and then we'll trace. So that when I pull up this picture of Alfred Eve Newman and pull up my transfer paper, you'll see um, you'll see our drawing underneath it that we can add color to after, once we fill up the whole page. So before we can uh, before we can begin to trace, we need to create our transfer paper. So grab your scratch paper, maybe one or two pieces. Grab your crayons and choose a color, probably a dark color, maybe, maybe black, but maybe blue would work, red or purple, and break it in half. We only need half a crayon for this, probably. So take your crayon, break it in half, and then carefully, Slowly, just like Carefully, you slowly. <laughs> With the Peel chair. the paper off. <laughs> we'll take the paper off. You might need to ask an older brother or sister. Ask an adult. Co-worker. Co Miranda. I was going to say, is there an adult in the room? <laughs> <laughs> Probably easier if you don't bite your nails. Nobody should Pe bite in their nails. Peel, peel the paper off. Oh, yeah. Keep your hands out of your face. Age of COVID. All right. Paper off. All right. Take your paper. Now, I'm going to, I peel the paper off so I can use the side of my crayon. 
If I use just the little point of my crayon, it'll take a long time to fill in this whole piece of paper. So instead of using the point of the tip of my crayon, put your crayon down on its side. Maybe you might need to hold your paper down. Might be a good idea to do this on top of a, uh, another piece of paper so that we don't get crayon all over your workspace. And then push hard and just fill it. We're going to fill in the whole piece of paper. I'm using one hand to hold it down. If you accidentally rip your piece of paper, that's okay. Start again on another piece of paper. And push, 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 push with the side of your crayon till the entire piece of paper is full. Then do it again. So we, the more color, the more crayon we put on this paper, the easier we will be able to transfer our image when we begin to trace. So you can fill in that whole piece of paper. This is not a fun part to watch, but hopefully you're filling this at home as well. So as you're filling yours, I'm, I'm going to try one in a different color too. So continue to fill in your piece of paper using the side of your broken crayon. This one we can do red. So when I trace, if I use red, when I trace, my, my trace drawing will be red. So now I'm going to take the, I have to peel this paper off again. <laughs> peel the paper off, peel the paper off, and then while I'm peeling the paper off, you're filling up your paper full of color. Sometimes Mr. Andy has to ask for help too. <laughs> Oftentimes I need to ask for help. Peel the paper off, all right, paper's off, round two. This one's going to be red. Let's try a red one. So I'm pushing hard. Use some muscle. Maybe stick your tongue out. Got to kind of be the Hulk on this. We want to have lots and lots of color. Push, push, push. I'm, getting, I'm pushing so hard my crayon's getting flat on one side. Push, push, push. See if you can make your crayon flat on one side. Get it all full color once, then go back and do it again. Stop every once in a while. Wipe the sweat off your brow. Do some finger yogas. And start again. Push it in. Fill it all full of color. All full of color. All right. This now I have two sheets. I have a red sheet and a black sheet. I think I'm ready to begin. To get, I'm ready to put those aside. We'll use those when we begin to transfer our image. So let's start. I'm going to start a new drawing on a fresh sheet of paper. So grab your uh, once. Grab your piece of paper. Remember, if you're not finished filling in with, to make your transfer paper, fall, push pause, follow along, and we'll, we'll post this video when we're finished so you can revisit it if you uh, need to review our steps for today. Now, before I can uh, transfer, I need to decide what images I want to transfer. And I'm gonna, I have a few magazines here. Now, I'm going to flip through these magazines and try to find some images that might tell a story about me, to, to tell people what some of the things that make me special. So let's, this is a magazine. I'm going to flip it open. Let's see a tent. I like to go camping. So a tent might be a, uh, a good image that I can use to, uh, to tell the story about me. So I'm going to rip out that tent. Just rip it out of your, rip it out of your uh, magazine. Uh, this one, that's a good image right there. I like to make pots. And I like to teach other people how to make pots. So I might rip the cover off this magazine for that pot. Put that on top of my tent. What kind of images are people finding? Yeah, let us know what kind of images you're finding. That's a great, that's a great, great idea. Type them in there. So my friend Miranda here can tell me what you're finding and we can share it with others. All right. I don't see any in that one. Let's open up this one. Ah, Bob Dylan. Greatest songwriter there ever was. Let's pit, let's rip out Bob Dylan because he's one of my favorite musicians, and that'll be those are good images to start with. So let's come back over here and learn. Let's talk about how we can transfer these images. Oh, we got a dog. A dog, a dog. Someone out there likes dogs. That's a great image. Does your dog have a party hat? All right. So now I need. I want to decide when we're put, when we're putting our images on our piece of paper. We want to create a composition. We're going to create a composition. We want our composition to have balance. We want it to have, uh, to have unity. We want it to look, you want to make some choices. You have to decide where each of your images is going to go. Roger Shimomura carefully places his images in just the right spot. We got a clock. To create a composition. So uh, the first thing I need to do, I'm, I might, I, one thing I might do is take that image and carefully tear out all the part of the paper that I don't need. I just want this yellow tent. 
So I'm gonna carefully, if you have scissors, you can cut it out, but we don't need to, because we're not gonna keep this tent. Tear that out. That We'll tear this one down to make my picture of Bob Dylan a little sm smaller. And so this is kind of like a, this is like a, a collage drawing. It's like a collage, but in a collage, we would glue our images down. We're not going to glue our images down. Instead, I'm going to trace our images so that the, our drawing is, is left on the paper. But just like a collage, I want to think about where I'm going to place each image. And I think uh, Bob Dylan's looking in this way, so he might be good down here at the bottom. Maybe my tent is someplace in there, the top. And this is a big, a big shape. My pot is a big shape, takes up most of that paper. So if I put it on the left side, it will help balance out those two smaller images. So you might practice putting your images down first. And then when you're ready to transfer, take your transfer paper. Place your transfer paper with the color side down. The side that we added all that crayon, put it down against your, your our drawing paper. Then take your image. Put it face up so, you, so I can see Bob Dylan there reading his book. I'm going to put it on top of my transfer paper. And this is where we need our pencil. Grab your pencil. And I'm going to trace over all the shapes that I see in this picture of Bob Dylan. Now, I don't need to draw every little detail. I can see all of, the, of these details on his hair and the details in the background. Those things I'm going to leave out. So uh, I'm going to start by chasing the, just those shapes. And when you trace, use your, your, your free hand to push down. Push down on the paper so your, your image doesn't slide around. Then take your pencil or your pen, pencil or a pen, and trace over those shapes, pushing hard. You've got to use some muscle for this one too. Push down. Try not to let your image shift around, but if it moves a little bit, that's a okay. Don't worry about it. Trace over all these shapes. I'm going to trace over Bob Dylan's nose there, his mouth, his chin, down on his shirt, down to his hands holding his book or his notepad. Maybe he's writing a song here in this picture. Pushing hard on over, over, over all the details and shapes that I want to transfer. When I pull away this my transfer paper in this picture of Mr. Zimmerman, we're going to we'll see our drawing underneath. Maybe a few of the details in the background. I can see a window in the background of this picture with the window curtain. And I'm going to trace mine kind of quickly. If you want, if you want to do this extra carefully you have some tape available, you could tape down your image and your transfer paper and then after you're finished tracing, peel off the tape and then pull away your drawing and our images below. So now I can see the shape of Bob Dylan and his bushy hair down there in the corner of my composition. Now I'm going to take my, my next drawing, this one, let's try, the, let's try our red transfer paper from my tent. So this time I'm going to take my red transfer paper with the red side down, put it down. We, I, when I was arranging my composition, I thought it was a good idea to put that tent above that picture below, the smaller picture below, to help balance out my big picture of our pot. Ooh, yellow tent. Yellow side up. That big tent. So I'm going to push down with my free hand for the lefties out there. My niece Nixie is watching. You'll use your right hand. Push down so your picture stays in place, and then use your pencil. Just like before, we're going to trace with some muscle all those shapes that you want people to see, all the important shapes. So the doorway is pretty important on a tent so I can get in and sleep. Need to put these tent poles on there so the tent doesn't fall down on me. A roof on the tent so I stay dry. I'm going to trace over all those important shapes. Maybe I can even, I can, I can draw some trees in the background here too. <clears throat> I can add some details if you like. So maybe, now it looks like this tent instead of in a showroom floor 
is out there in the wilderness with some trees. Can you, can you see the red there on that? If you look closely in our camera, you can see now that I can see my red tent above Bob Dylan there. All right, let's keep going. Now, I have this big pot. It looks like that my transfer paper may not quite be big enough for that big pot. So if you need to make bigger transfer paper, use a bigger piece of paper. Fill that bigger piece of paper full of color. So I might have to decide what part of the pot do I want to put. Maybe that top, the top part of the pot. Maybe is the most important part. So I might have part of this pot come off the page a little bit. I think I'm going to angle it. Angle it to create a little bit of movement, make it look like that pot's dancing a little bit. All right, just like before, we're getting the hang of it. Push down with your free hand, push down that sandwich with your picture on top, transfer paper in the middle, and your drawing paper on the bottom, and go ahead and trace. We're going to trace those shapes again. Trace the handle on this pot, trace the body of this pot. Trace the right handle on the pot, all the important shapes. I might leave out some of these texture. That might not be as important as those big shapes. And I think I'm going to leave out, there's a design on this pot. I might leave out that design and create a design of my own. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll draw one of my favorite animals right on top of that pot. That might be a good image for you to look for. Or if you want to freestyle draw an image, like I'm doing now, of one of your favorite animals, that's a good way to tell a story about yourself. Use that animal like a symbol for yourself. So there I have a buffalo in the, in the middle of my pot. Like that, right? So, uh, we can keep filling this, this paper until it's full of images. And each time you select an image, think about why you're selecting that image to tell, to tell your story. And think, of, and think carefully about where you want to put that image in your picture to create a comp composition with balance and rhythm and unity. And as once you're, when you have your, your picture, your paper, full of outlines, all your transferred drawings, then you can go in with your crayons or colored pencils or even watercolor, and we can add some color. So you, you, you can use this, you, you can use this, your traced outlines, like a coloring book, and add some color. You can make, uh, you can do imaginary colors. You can make, you can blend your colors together to make it look almost like a painting. So that that's, can be something that you can continue to do on your own when we're finished here in just a moment. And remember, when you're finished today, we want to see what you made. So share your your uh, take pictures and share your finished artwork, your mashed up Roger Shimamura drawing, and share it to, the, to share it to today's Facebook event page. Uh, so, so uh, I was missing one last sheet, but uh, so when you're finished, I hope you're still working. Tell us uh, and, and tell. Uh, remember, show, share your finished image. Um, and here we go. <laughs> Miranda just came came in. Uh, of course, Sorry. I don't need a sign. To, I don't need a sign to tell me this. Thank you for making art with us. Don't, but don't forget to share those images and uh, follow follow us on Facebook for updates about all of Jawson's art from afar experiences. We're doing all kinds of digital experiences for you while you're staying at home including virtual art camps that are happening this summer. Thanks for art, making art with me. I'll see you again next week. Adios.